Well, in the meantime, here's a big deal that they could have had, but I don't know what's going on at this point. Chris Jericho versus our boy, I'll just say it once, take a sh**. Takeshita. But then I'll refer to him as our boy Take from here on out because we like him. He's talented. So we'll say his name, Takeshita. The the leech of the overness of anyone in AEW, Chris Jericho, was in full force and effect. A single match between him and Jericho. And yes, I understand that you know Jericho wants to show that he can still go with the with the young kids but the problem is take has not been presented yet as anything like a threat to the top level singles that he could be because we've seen him so intermittently and frequently he's been in tags and in goofy garbage matches this guy has talent and he unlike any of the other Japanese imports that they brought in. He's not so old and decrepit. He's ready for the rock and chair out in front of Cracker Barrel. He's not so minute that he's ready for Cowboy Lang's fucking opponent on Lord Littlebrook's fucking midget troop. He is has some charisma and ability and size and moves. And yes, it would have been great if he had. You know, as soon as they debuted him, they had a a coherent and focused push behind him. He'd be a main event guy, I think, in their company now. But no, no, you can't get take over by having him have to slow down to work with Jericho and then put him over Jericho by Jericho getting hit in the head by the screwdriver from the goofy manager. This is all about Jericho. This is not about Takeshita. Tell me I'm wrong. You must really mean it. No, it's completely the problem. Takeshita turned heel. He showed a lot of promise. Turned heel. Showed a whole lot of promise. What has he done since then? He's done nothing to break away from the pack, held down by this callous crap, tag matches. He beat Jericho. Did it mean anything? This is Does the it guy. help him? Did it really push him any further? No. It was just another garbage match, and we'll tell y'all what happened in a second, but in generics, this is the guy that should be Nakamura in the WWE. They should be doing videos where he speaks forcefully and confidently in Japanese, his native language, and they put the subtitles up and he's in a fucking, he's in a, you know, fucking appropriate location with atmosphere. He's somebody, he's dressed up. Maybe he's in the, instead of the fucking goddamn nice restaurant that the Escobar crowd is in over there with people dining around them. He, the focus is on him. He's in a goddamn fucking luxurious fucking hotel suite. And he's saying these things dressed up as somebody and then they're translated on the subtitles and he's beating people in singles matches left and right. And instead he's just, he wanders around with the rest of these goofy groups. Ed Hobbs is in the same situation. He could be Treated with the same concept, completely different looks as Takeshita. But uh, that's the thing with Jericho. They have a match. One minute in, they're out on the floor. He gives Jericho a brain buster on the floor, picks him up and rolls him in, and the match continues. So the brain buster on the floor is a heat spot at this point now on a 50-something-year-old man. Don't you need a brain for the brain buster to actually have an effect on you? It's the neck. They just named it. The I brains. know. Making a joke about Jericho's lack of brains. Well, no, I was trying to actually. What you said, you raised a valid point, but unfortunately, if it was something that would attack the brain instead of the neck, Jericho would be impervious. 
Should the fans contact Stephen P. New to sue the Brain Buster for false advertising? One eight seven seven five zero Steve. Uh, but anyway, so then Hobbs tripped Jericho, like, and then Sammy comes down and hits Hobbs with a chair, and Hobbs doesn't sell it. So Sammy gives him a cutter on the floor, and then hits him over the head with the chair, and they they fight off. They fight off, and that's not even the end of the fucking match. They're not even to the break spot yet. Because once they do that, then Jericho, for whatever reason, puts on the kabuki mask that Takeshita wears down to the ring, right? That's what it was. And he climbs up on the top rope and dives off the top to the floor at Takeshita, but he can't see because he got the mask on and he missed him by three feet. And that was the break spot. Sure, so, sure was. So, I mean, I mean they, they, who does these fucking finishes? They did the finish in the middle of the first fucking segment. So then they come back, and to make things even, Takeshita did a cannonball flip over the top rope to the floor on Jericho, missed Jericho by three feet. We're right past him. So I fast forward to the fucking finish because this was just the problem was Takeshita's having to slow down for Jericho. Takeshita's having to adjust what he can do for the because he respects the older veteran blah 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 that's leading the match. And and that's why Takeshita had to dumb himself down from being able to get over like he can and do things he can do because he's working with Jericho. And that's why I didn't do either one of these guys any good because people are tired of the goddamn bullshit finish, which is going to happen here in a second. And it's, it didn't get to cash to any heat, nor did it get Jericho any sympathy because I think he's past the sympathy point. But Takeshita gives Jericho the spinning blue thunder bomb off the top rope and they landed in a heap. And that was a two count. And then Jericho's up moments later, gets the fucking walls. And Don Fallis slides the chair into the ring without getting in the rings. The referee just looks over and sees a chair slide into his view and go, oh, oh, and goes to pick it up and carry it to the other side of the ring from whence it did not came. He doesn't look around to see who threw it. He just picks the chair up and carries it the opposite side of the ring to put it out while Don gets up on the apron and hits Jericho in the head with the handle of a screwdriver. And then Takeshita got the walls on Jericho and Jericho tapped. If, if, he didn't stab him with the screwdriver because he didn't bleed, and of course that wouldn't make you tap out from the walls of fucking Jericho. <laughs> so he hit him with the handle of the screwdriver. Well, I can buy that Jericho then crumpled in a heap from getting hit in the head with a goddamn Stanley tool. But then, no, then... That may not have been his first screwdriver on that day. <laughs> it may not have been the first screwdriver at all. But then after you hit the man with the fucking brass knuckles, you get a submission hold on him, and instead of being unconscious and the referee calling it, he taps. He recovered from the screwdriver. Not the screwdrivers, but the screwdriver. Only to tap out to the... Good God. Four and a quarter stars in The Observer. What? Yeah. What? He loves his Chris Jericho. Uh He's no, he's he's got to be scared of Jericho. Jericho cutting off his access to the cool kids. To the cool kids. What the fuck? So that this TV match that meant nothing with a past his prime canned ham and a potential future star in another company was better than many Flair and Steamboat matches. Four Is and what, a quarter stars. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, ladies and gentlemen, this assassination of Dave Meltzer's credibility has been brought to you by his own fucking chicken lips. <laughs>